A series is a sum of terms from a sequence. Sequences can be finite or infinite, and that means that series can also be finite or infinite. Here I've prepared two simple sequences, one of each, involving the natural numbers. We can very easily make series out of these by just adding up the terms. 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 comes to 15. In the case of the infinite series, we can start writing out the numbers, but at some point we'll have to acknowledge that it's not worth continuing and just write dots to indicate that the sum continues forever. Clearly this second series cannot be written as equal to some value because it continues to get bigger and bigger. Now, writing out the terms on the left is often rather tedious, so we use the summation notation. In the first case, we can write the sum for i runs from 1 to 5 of the natural numbers i. The answer, of course, is still 15. In the second case, we can still use the sum symbol, but now we have to put the infinity symbol on top to indicate that the sum continues forever. It's no use writing equals something here, because the sum gets bigger and bigger. In such a case, we say that it is divergent. Any series that continues to get bigger and bigger as we add terms is divergent. But there are also other types of divergence. Consider for a moment the series with powers of negative 1. Odd powers of negative 1 are negative 1, whilst even powers are positive 1. Remember that we're meant to be adding the terms, so as we gradually add on terms we will start with negative 1, then add 1 to get naught then add negative 1 again, and you can see that the series, as we add the terms on, is just alternating all the time. The series is also divergent because it does not approach any particular value. However, it does not also tend to infinity. It doesn't get big. It just alternates between these values. Some mathematicians have argued that such a series ought to be assigned the value equal to its average of negative a half. But other mathematicians say this is nonsense and should be consigned to the realms of philosophy. In either case, we will not pursue the concept of divergent series here. Rather, we will be interested in the idea of convergence. A series is convergent if it can be seen to actually sum to or to approach a particular value. In the case of finite series, Clearly, in principle, we could always add up all the terms and get a value. Finite series are always convergent. The question here might be, can we find a formula to do the addition for us rather than actually having to add everything up? We'll look at a couple of examples in a moment. In the case of infinite series, the question of convergence is a little more subtle. Here we find that we will need to ask the question as to whether adding up the terms gradually gets closer and closer to some value. In other words, we need the idea of a limit. Before moving on to look at infinite series, let's just briefly look at a couple of the cases of formulae that I mentioned for finite series. Here I've written down two formulae that have been proved in the past. I don't have time to prove them here. The first one tells us that the sum of the natural numbers from 1 to n is a half n, n plus 1. There's a similar, slightly more complicated formula for the squares of the natural numbers. In fact, we can do this for any power of natural numbers. Let's just finish by checking. We already know the sum from 1 to 5 of the natural numbers. Here we can check the formula. It's telling us that the answer should be a half times 5 times 6. A half of 30 is certainly 15, so we recognize the answer we had before. If you're good at mental arithmetic, you can use this formula as a party trick. You say to someone, give me a number from 1 to 100, and I'll add up everything up to it. Maybe they choose 40. OK, so in your head you quickly do a half of 40 is 20. Multiply that by 41, and the answer is 820. That person can go away and check by adding up all the numbers, but they will surely find 820. Let's now leave the topic of finite series behind and move on to infinite series. 
Here I've prepared one in advance. An infinite series consisting of powers of a half. I've written out on the right what this means. A half to the naught plus a half to the one, etc. We could reduce some of these powers. A half to the zero is one. A half to the one is one half. A half squared is a quarter, then an eighth, and so on. If we started to add up this series, we would get, first of all, one, then one and a half, then one and three quarters, then one and seven eighths. You can see the pattern. The next one will be one and fifteen sixteenths, and so on. It rather looks like the number we're getting is getting closer and closer to two. In fact, we can show that this series sums to two. What we need to do, though, is to discuss in a mathematical way how to state this. The quantities that we've just been writing, one, one and a half, one and three quarters, and so on, are called partial sums. A partial sum, S n, is the sum of the first n terms of the series. So in our case S1 was 1 while S2 was 1 plus a half which was 1 and a half and so on. S3 was 1 and 3 quarters S4 was 1 and 7 eighths. We've already commented that it can be shown that these numbers are getting closer and closer to 2. So we can say that Sn approaches 2 as n approaches infinity. In the language of limits, we write this as lim n goes to infinity of Sn is 2. Now remember what Sn was. It was the sum of terms in the series just choosing the first n of them. So in our series Sn was simply the sum from i equals naught half to the i. Now we're talking about the first n terms of the series and it is starting at naught not one so the Sn must actually be the sum from naught to n minus one. We can now see how to define the sum of the series. We say that the sum from i equals naught to infinity of a half to the i is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the Sn and in this case I've told you that the answer is 2. We use this concept in general. If a series has partial sums Sn and the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn is some value L then we say that the series sums to or has value L and we write sum i equals 1 to infinity of the terms in the series, whatever they might be, equals L. It doesn't matter if the series starts at 1. That concludes my discussion of partial sums.